to live and to love the gospel of the Lord. Heart to Heart, a Catholic media ministry, presents an inspiring gospel reflection by Father Michael Sparrow. Father Michael is a Jesuit priest working as a writer and retreat master at the Bellarmine Jesuit Retreat House outside Chicago. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, all that you see here, the day will come when there will not be left a stone upon a stone that will not be thrown down. Then they asked him, teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when these things are about to happen? He answered, see that you are not deceived, for many will come in my name saying, I am ye, and the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must happen first. But it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines, and plagues from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. Before all this happens, however, they will seize and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogue and into prisons. They will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead to your giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand, for I myself shall give you a wisdom in speaking that all of your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. Last Wednesday night, they were awakened in the middle of the night with the room in which they were sleeping filled with smoke. They had purchased the ranch out in Montana that a dear friend of mine and his wife had previously owned. My brothers and my nephews and I were invited out there for a wonderful Western-style vacation not too many years ago. It was a joyful time for us to come together, riding horses and fishing and doing all the kinds of things that you'd do on a dude ranch. The center of the ranch is this beautiful farmhouse constructed of logs and stones and a beautiful interior, which my friend Jean's wife, Barbara, had personally designed every inch of that home. They knew it backwards and forwards. It's a beautiful home. Jean was a retired uh, vice president of Continental Bank had done quite well in his retirement, and one of his dreams and his wife's dream, Barbara, was to have a ranch. And they enjoyed that ranch for 18 years. And they loved to host parties and invite friends. They'd invite kids from the inner city to come to the ranch and celebrate with them. And so they were shocked when a couple years ago, when they began to age and they could no longer care for the ranch, they sold it to another couple that could enjoy it as they had enjoyed it. And just this past week, 
In preparation for the change of the seasons, the family had begun to decorate for Christmas, put up their Christmas tree and their Christmas decorations. But there was a faulty extension cord that short-circuited in the middle of the night. It caught fire and the fire moved from the first floor up to the second floor, filled the home with smoke. They barely escaped with their lives. They had to be evacuated by way of ambulance to a nearby town. And all that was left of their home is rubble. All of their belongings gone. They were lucky to have escaped with their life. I tell that story because our gospel today is about Jesus watching people admire this beautiful temple, which was the center of worship for Israel. It had taken generations to build by Herod the Great. It was the pride of Israel. The Jewish historian Josephus from the first century said, the massive stones of the temple were covered in gold. And as the sun would set, it would be reflected in these golden walls that were so brilliant that the, it was as if the temple was on fire. It's the pride of Israel. And yet Jesus comes up to these people that are admiring, gawking at all of the beauty, if you just might imagine ourselves going to St. Peter's and looking at all of the beautiful artwork. Or walking around in New York City at all the skyscrapers. Or even downtown Chicago, walking along the river. And somebody comes up and says, in this case, it, it happens to be Jesus, and says, everything that you're admiring, it's all going to be gone. It'll be torn down. Not a stone upon a stone will be left. You can just imagine how the people looked at him and kind of nervously moved away. Of course, Jesus' prophecy was fulfilled many years after his death in 70 AD. The rebellion of the Jews was radically put was by the radical Jewish sect that was trying to force the Romans out of their occupation. The rebellion was brutally crushed and to teach them a lesson, the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. End of temple worship. Our readings today are apocalyptic as we approach the end of the liturgical year. There's a thematic parallel between the first reading from the prophet Malachi and this image of destruction that Jesus talks about and persecution that he warns is coming. And the church selects these readings at this time of year as the liturgical year comes to a close to remind us every year that folks, we're not gonna be here forever. Our lives are a pilgrimage. We come from God, we journey back from God. For some of us, it's a long journey. For some of us, it's short. We don't know the length of the days of our life. And the church asks us to reflect on the fact that all of us are gonna someday die, not to depress us, not to discourage us, but to say, life is precious. Use the days of your life. Use the days of our lives for justice. What's justice? Right relationship. Right relationship with your spouse, right relationship with your family, right relationship with your coworkers, right relationship with your community of faith, right relationship with your neighborhood, right relationship with our earth. Live that justice, because the reality is we don't know the length of days. Our first reading is from the book of the prophet Malachi. I've always had a certain soft spot in my heart for Malachi, because a number of years ago I was 
leading a pilgrimage over to Israel, and the hotel that we were at was not too far from a site that said, the burial place of the prophet Malachi. And I would walk by that for several days in the course of the pilgrimage whenever we had free time. It was in the backyard of a Jewish family. And I thought, yeah, I'm not sure about that. But finally, I had the courage. I came up to the young man who was tending the chickens in his yard. And I said, seriously, the prophet Malachi is buried in your backyard? And he said, yes. I said, well, take me to him. So he got an oil lamp and we descended down these rickety steps and we went into this ancient cave that was underneath their backyard. And as we walked through the cave, we went through all of these ancient graves and he pointed out some of the different figures. He was very proud and knowledgeable about his Jewish history. And after we had walked through some distance, twisting and turning, and I was hoping that he wasn't going to lead me there because there would be no way I'd ever find my way out of that cave by myself. He said, this is, this is the prophet Malachi's grave site. What has Malachi said? The day of justice will come like a blazing oven. It's going to burn up the evildoers, reduce them to stubble. But for the righteous, it will be a sun of justice with its healing rays. That same fire, for those who are not in right relationship with God, not in right relationship with one another, is a fire of destruction. For those in right relationship, it provides light and warmth and healing grace. The same fire. We often picture purgatory and indeed hell as hellfire, as the fire is in flames of purgatory. But the prophet Ezekiel had, do you remember the prophet Ezekiel had a vision of God and it was fire upon fire, wheels of fire. And do you remember when Moses first encountered God, it was a burning bush. And do you remember that when Moses came down from the mountain, his face was on fire, so much so that the people said, put a veil over it. And when Jesus went up on the mountain on the transfiguration, he was on fire. His clothes, clothes blazing like the sun. And don't we picture the saints with halos, with this light surrounding them. That's the image that Malachi puts before us. For those who are in right relationship, we are set on fire. For those who are not in right relationship, we burn and are in agony before the same fire. It's how we are in relationship to the divine. I love this further image. St. Margaret Mary Alico is the visitation nun to whom Jesus appeared with the revelations of the Sacred Heart. And in that first revelation of the Sacred Heart, Jesus appeared to Margaret Mary with a blazing sun in the center of his chest, a fiery sun in the center of his chest, this fiery love. Jesus wants to set us on fire, to be consumed with holy desire. But if we resist that, if we say no to God, then we suffer the consequences. Which is why every time, every time at this time of year, the church asks us to say, remember, you're not gonna be here forever. Use this precious gift of time well. I don't know that any of us like to contemplate our deaths. But this past week on Thursday, we celebrated the 23rd anniversary of the death of Cardinal Bernadine, Cardinal Joseph Bernadine, the former Cardinal Archbishop here in Chicago. Cardinal Bernadine's one of my heroes, greatly admire him. 
But his father died when he was only six years old and it traumatized young Joseph. So much so that he had three great fears. One of those fears is that he would die relatively young. He died at age 69. I'm 69, that's pretty young. Another fear was that he would die of cancer just like his dad. He died of cancer just like his dad. The third fear is that he would be a source of scandal for the church. He was the first cardinal of modern times to be internationally disgraced by a false accusation of child abuse. All of the fears, the three major fears of Cardinal Bernadine's life came true. But because in the midst of those fears, he didn't turn away from the Lord, but turned to the Lord, it transformed him. He was placed in that oven, in a crucible of suffering, but he was transformed. As bread is transformed when it's put in the oven, as wine is transformed, grapes are transformed when they're fermented in darkness. So in the midst of the inevitable suffering that is going to touch all of our lives, it either breaks us and destroys us or it transforms us. For Cardinal Bernadine, he said yes to God's grace and it transformed him. And if you were living in Chicago 23 years ago, you remember his funeral, the city streets lined, tens of thousands of people, Catholics, Protestants, Jews, Muslims, people of no religious tradition. And a week after he died, his picture appeared on Newsweek magazine with the caption, teaching us how to die. For in the end, Bernadine said, death is not the enemy. Death is my friend. Because it unites me with the Lord that I've see sought to serve my entire life. We're not gonna get out of this life alive. All of us are gonna pass through that narrow doorway of death one day. And so the church says now, here, contemplate that. Use the days of our lives to build relationships that last. Final image. St. Ignatius Loyola in his spiritual exercises recommends this meditation. He says, picture yourself on your deathbed. I know none of us like to think about that. But he says, try it. Picture yourself on your deathbed. And then look back on your life. And what are the choices that you wish you had made? What's most important? For most of us, I suspect it's our relationships with our loved ones. I wish we would have spent a little more time with our spouses, with our kids, made a difference with the resources and the gifts that God has given. What are the choices that we, looking back on our life, wish we had made? St. Ignatius says, okay, armed with that knowledge, live from that place of freedom. Amen? Okay. Amen. Heart to heart, hand in hand, praying for grace to understand. Spirit of Jesus, open our hearts to live and to love the gospel.